I have people come by all the time. They're like, so you can make a living doing this? I'm like, well, I can. I've been doing it for five years and it's, yeah, it pays my bills, but I work 16 hour days all the time. And yeah, all summer, you know, we have such beautiful weather in Vancouver in the summer and I would love to be just out riding my bike. And I'm, yeah, I'm stuck behind a, a table at a craft fair and then all weekend. And then on Monday, it's uh, back to trying to make stock for the next weekend. But it depends on the on the show. You know, I, I did Folk Fest, which was really fun, or Harmony Arts Festival uh, in West Vancouver, where it's really long hours. You know, you're out there 11 to 9, so it's a 10-hour day of standing on your feet and talking to customers, and um, it's really, really draining. But you're also, you know, meeting people and listening to great music and hanging out outside, and all you hear all day long is, like, how great you are. <laughs> Because if people don't like your work, they just walk past. They just don't come into your booth. So, yeah, in that sense, it's kind of the best job in the world, you know. <laughs> Growing up, like I, it wasn't possible to be an artist. Like, it wasn't even on my radar. It was you had to be, you know, someone who lived in a loft in New York and had a trust fund or something like that to be able to afford <laughs> that lifestyle. Um, yeah, I remember dropping art class in high school so I could take physics because that was the responsible, mature thing to do. And uh, yeah, it was just, I was going to go to university and get a degree and be a grown up. Um, <laughs> and then the internet happened and I saw people who were able to self-represent and, and didn't need to be, uh, you know, in New York. You know, I was a kid growing up in Winnipeg, so it wasn't, I was not exposed to art and, and artists living like modern artists living and making a living full time um, it just it just wasn't a thing it wasn't an option um, until i saw people who were able to build their own website and, and put stuff up on sites like etsy and sell directly um, all across the world you know if i just had my stuff in a gallery you wouldn't get to see so many people like so such a huge percentage of the population just doesn't go to galleries and just doesn't see stuff like that. But they are out walking around on the seawall and hanging out, you know, on Main Street during like Car Free Fest and stuff like that. So when those people see my stuff for the first time, like they're amazed. And there might be the odd negative comment, but for the most part, people come in and even if they don't buy something, like they just are so excited to meet you and and just gush and absolutely will be like, you're so talented and I, I love your work and this is so cute. And, and yeah, it's uh, it's definitely nice to, to have that uh, kind of ego boost of people um, complimenting you. Uh, but yeah, I think the, the danger in that is, are you creating stuff from your heart? Are you creating the kind of art that you would make if you weren't worried about selling stuff to pay the rent? Or are you making stuff just that you know people will like? I try to just make what I want to make and, and not worry about it too much, but I also know when it's like coming up, I gotta pay the rent. Um, those thoughts definitely creep in. Hi, I'm Chris G. Brownlee, KGB, and I'm a painter.